with our student speaker today. He is an outstanding safety at Michigan State, and as you're about to hear, he is also an outstanding member of his community. Please welcome Kari Willis. Thank you. Uh, when Coach D initially told me that I was speaking, uh, I was kind of nervous, uh, not going to lie, but uh, he told me it was an opportunity for me to tell my story. My mentality on game day is what we like to call a Spartan dog mentality. You got guys, you know, out there talking trash, you know, you talking trash back and forth. It gets chippy at times. That's part of me that I like to express myself in a way that's outgoing, free-flowing, and then, you know, whatever happens, happens as long as everything is within the rule of the game. Kari Willis drops him. Loft it near the right side Nice line. play there. And it is incomplete. Kari Willis hit him at just the right time. Once the ball is snapped, I just try to go full speed. There's a lot of pressure. Hit as he throws. It's picked off. The Spartans get the interception. It's Kari Willis who's having himself a heck of a game. My hometown, uh, Jackson, Michigan, is about 35 minutes away from East Lansing. I like to come back when we have a day off or something. I'll be taking my mind off the game, bringing me back down to earth from the game last night. Drake. Drake. Yachty, whatever his name is. He was calling names? Oh, yeah. You said Drake name? Jackson, uh, it's a real small town. Growing up on the south side entails poverty, gang violence. Some of us are dealt hands that are a little bit less favorable than people who grew up in other neighborhoods. I see a lot of people look like me dealing with the same things that I dealt with growing up as a kid. Early in my life, I was very, very young. One of my friends, uh, kind of close to me, he's a little bit younger than me, you know, had been, you know, basically beaten to death uh, by his, like, by his, like, a stepfather, and he passed, and that was kind of like an eye-opener of where I am. It drive me to be part of the solution and not the problem. My dad has been a director here for about 20-plus years. Right now, you guys making all one move. You're not going to get two guys in one move. He's always have a big voice here in our community. You still got to get to your spot. You still got to get to your spot. Get to your spot. Seeing him help out a lot of people athletically, socially, helping people with their marriage. He played counselor, peacemaker a lot. Nice, nice, nice. Come on. Go, go. Jab, jab, cross. I've seen him go down to the courtroom and try to talk judges into lightening up things for some of the people that he know. That's just inspiring. Let's go, good job. Too fast. Take your time, set him up. Kari, he's always been a really, really good athlete. Come on, that's quick. Stay low, stay low. But yeah. at some point, yeah. he started to aspire to be beyond normal. He wanted something deeper. He began working in the summers down here. I want to say probably when he was about 14. Kind of starts off in maintenance where he has to sweep, uh, mop floors, sweep, and different things like that until you show that uh, when you get an opportunity to lead a group, you step out. When he got that opportunity, he leapt on it. We all turn and the ball should stay here. It should never be left out here. You got me? Don't leave the ball. Guard it with your body and quick turn. Come on. Almost every time that they get a day off, Kyrie usually comes down. There it is, right there. He'll have something already lined up with another kid to sit down in the office and go over there, film with him. He still be getting in trouble. He, he, he actually, he, he turned, he, I'm telling you, he turned the corner. Sometimes he'll be going out to the prison and have him speak with people out there. To have him come from here, go to the platform that he's been given, and come back and get, reach out to these young people to help them understand that, yes, you see me on TV, but this is home, and if, if I can help you achieve something, I want to do that. Come on. Sitting on. You sitting on me? Sitting is you? What about that? I'm sitting on me. Kai's from right here. Kai's from King Center. Everybody knows that, right? I'll let him tell you what it took for him to get where he is and what you guys have to do to follow a similar path. Yeah, I'll say the biggest thing, man, is just um, the off the, off the court, off the field things. Obviously, everybody want to want to play and everybody want to make it. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen for every single person. But you can still make it by school. You can still make it by making good choices. You know, where you need to be, you're going to start being realistic with yourself and how you weigh up against you know, other people from other places or other people here. 
and then uh, then you adjust. So if you're not working hard enough or if they're better than you, you know, you should feel some type of way about that as a competitor. But uh, also, if you're not the best in your class, you should feel some type of way about that, too. So don't think that you just could be competitive out here and then come back and go in the classroom and be the worst guy. That shows a little bit about your competitive nature, too. All right, Dr. Juwan Gajufu has one of my favorite sayings. I say that to, the, to my kids all the time. They're probably tired of hearing it. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. You say you want to play for whatever university, but every time I see you, you with guys that don't go to class. You with guys that don't compete. You with guys that don't want to be better. How, how can you be better if that's all you hang around? Yeah, that's, 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 that's called being a leader. Good to go. Captain, number one, Kari Willis. Hey! Everyone calls him Cap. 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 Captain. Yo. Cap. The, the speeches he gives, the speeches he gives in front of the team, um, he represents pretty well, man. The name on the, the front of it, the jersey as well on the back. The Big Ten media speech. You know, I can never you know, be grateful enough for you giving me the opportunity, Coach D. Um, I only represent this school, uh, but myself and my family and everything I stand for. Um, I don't know if I ever have a platform like that in my life ever again. There's an old saying that my father used to use. He still uses it to this day. And that saying is, if you blow my candle out, that won't make your candle shine any brighter. So let's go back, let's light these candles in these communities. I feel that the rest of the 40 plus players that are here, we have that opportunity, and I hope that we can all uh, make our communities better by going back and giving back. Thank you very much, God bless you. Go Green. Way to go, man. You killed that. Thanks, thanks. You killed it. That was unbelievable. Good for you, you, man. Thanks, thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. It's definitely easy to bleed green and white when you grow up in the Morrissey household. Both my parents are from Flint, Michigan. And that is where I met Jim. We went to high school together. We eventually went to college together as well to Michigan State. Bradley over the middle, Kinnebrew had it. Morrissey, and Morrissey intercepts. I played at Michigan State from 1981 to 1984. Running out of the stadium at Michigan State meant everything to me. I, of course, went to all the games on Saturdays. Being able to see him play on Saturday afternoons was a great joy for me. Hi, everybody, from the Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, over 100. Michigan, Michigan State game, they think it's a big game for them. We know it's a big game for us. So, in 1984, my senior year, we play at Michigan. Jim Harbaugh was uh, the quarterback at the time for Michigan, and they're playing very well. Unfortunately for Michigan, Jim got hurt. Fumble! Fumble there, and Michigan State dives. It's either Harbaugh or Tyree. Tyree. Tyree comes up with a football. Jim broke his arm, and at that point, then we kind of took off, and we won the game 19-7. to There is a myth out there that I did it, and it's not true. I want to state on the record that I did not break his arm. <laughs> The kids just grew up knowing that Jim and I love our alma mater. On one of the journeys back home, of course, we're like, hey guys, let's go see where mom and dad went to school. I was about six or seven when my dad wanted to stop by East Lansing and you know show us you know where he played. Like, hey, let's go by the football stadium. Maybe no one will stop us. That'd be so cool to have the kids and Amy run out of the tunnel and pretend like you're the 2001 Michigan State Spartans. And get ready for the start of a 2001 football season. Here they come, the Michigan State Spartans. Just to see his face watching us run out there, I think that was the biggest moment that I can remember. You're all Michigan State Spartans. It was such a memory that, you know, we have on family video that we watch, I think, every year. And it's something that's truly incredible now being a, a fifth year senior here, being able to live out that legacy of my dad playing here and that Morsi name on my back. It's truly, truly special. That other team in Michigan, it's always been a rivalry. Seeing my dad watch those games, I could kind of understand 
the rivalry a little bit, but um, when I got here, it definitely made more sense. In 2015, I was a redshirt freshman. We were playing at the big house. They were putting the ball away, and Coach D came up to us on the sideline and just says, try to make something happen, we're going to send all 11. 23-21 Michigan. It looks like we are going to go away losing. Matt was right there at the time of the punter trying to kick the ball. Well, he has trouble with the snap, and the ball is free. It's picked up by Michigan State. Jalen wants Jackson, and he scores on the last play of the game. Unbelievable. I was down in the second row, and all the Michigan State players ran towards the Michigan State section. And we're celebrating and celebrating. I'm, I'm looking for Matt. I'm looking for Matt. I don't see Matt. We stayed with Jalen, and you know he was still in so much pain. And, you know he's screaming, "My hip, my hip!" And you know we're just trying to tell him, like, "Hey, Jalen, I know you're in so much pain right now, but you just became like you know the number one Michigan State legend that you could that you could imagine after this play." And he got a little smile after that. Twenty years down the road, when we come back for a Michigan State reunion, it'll be something special to watch that play. Ever since I was little, I liked sports. I needed to be active. I always had a lot of energy. Just nothing doing. Raekwon Williams, 99. I would just be throwing the ball in the parking lot. And one day, Tim Hall was driving past. I think I was riding down the street one day and I saw him. I'm like, man, kid, you should be playing football. He was like, uh, you want to play some real ball? I was like, man, I love to play some real ball. And he told me to come to practice one day. His mom was a little hesitant at first, you know what I'm saying? I used to see him. He used to be, he used to be like, man, there's some big old boys on that team. I said, boy, them big boys can fall down. He wasn't that talented. Couldn't put his hand down in three-point stand. But he always tried, though. He came to practice every day. And he never gave up. I'm from the west side of Chicago. East Garfield Park area. When you grow up in an area like that, you see a lot of different people and experience a lot of different things, from little league coaches to uh, game bangers on the corner. The biggest thing Chicago taught me about living life or growing up is you got to take advantage of everything you get because it can be gone. I have four boys. Raised the oldest, then Corey, then Corley, then Jaquan. We never really had a house, a place to call home. I'll be with my grandma and my cousins all the time, living house to house. We got some stability when we stayed there with my mom, cousin, her kids, and my mom kids were all in there. So it was about eight of us in one room, you know, it was crazy. But that was the first time I felt like I had a home, so I was like happy about it. In third grade, I met Mackenzie Hyde. She was just one of those teachers that everybody in the classroom knew she cared about us. I just saw that he had tremendous potential. I knew that he had, between his mom, his aunts, his uncles, cousins and whatnot, there was a huge support network there, but there are other things that unfortunately were not available to him. And so just trying to make sure that he had and he recognized that he had opportunities outside of the confines of the neighborhood. On the weekend, she would take us to like different areas of, of Chicago that I didn't even know existed at the time. That's when their relationship started to grow. She's legit. She's real as they come, I say. I only taught for those two years, so after that second year of teaching, I went to law school here at Loyola. I stayed in touch with him. We'd see each other a couple times a year. He was not just good at sports. He did have good grades. He was also valedictorian of his eighth grade class. When he was in eighth grade, I went to see one of his football games. I talked to the coaches and they said, yeah, he's a talented football player and he should be looking into the Catholic schools um, for high school. So I talked to his mom and I said, do you mind if I take him to do the Catholic school testing? She said, sure, and Raekwon was totally excited about doing that. 
that summer, he and a couple other friends from Garfield Park would take the bus up and do this basketball program at Gordon Tech, which is now DePaul Prep. And the basketball coach just adored him. And so I was able to work out with high school, a partial scholarship, and I would pay the, the remainder for Raekwon to attend the school. I said, look, I can't be successful for you. So while I can write a check for the tuition, you're the one that has to do the work to stay in the school. So if you're doing your part, I'll do my part. That changed my life. DePaul Prep, it was a little distance from uh, East Garfield Park. He was coming from the west side, going all the way up north. That's too far for him to come. He, he had to be at school at seven. And I remember times where I was like super late to class and teachers were like, I'm in detention now. So his mom and I talked and obviously talked to Raekwon and said, you know, it would be a lot easier if he stayed, if he stayed at my house a few days a week to just get his academics in order. That made the commute to get to school so much easier. You know how the guys would like tell him. So I'm staying there a couple nights and then a couple nights turned to a couple weeks. Now I'm like staying months at a time. And then after a while you just realize like, man, I live here now. That meant everything for my mom to even allow me to um, go over to McKenzie's because it was going to better my life. I was very cool with it because it's my son and that's what he wanted. So it was okay. His mom and I took him up for that first day. It's definitely bittersweet as it is for anyone leaving their kid at college for the first time. Probably an hour after we left, he's made, you know, some of his best runs for life. I was always hanging with Ray, and then Ray was always hanging with me, so we always, like, bonded together. I used to always hear him call his brothers and cousins up and just talk to them and laugh and crack jokes with one another. Corey and Corley adored Raekwon, and he was always so tremendously attentive to them. His cousin, Antonio, would always say, I'm watching your brothers and sisters. You know, we're all proud of you, and I'll help hold down the fort, so to speak. Antonio, that's like my uh, twin, for real. We were the same age, but I felt like he was just so advanced and everything. Everything I learned was from him. That bond that we had, it's like, there's so many different stories I can tell about that guy. That's, that's, my, that's my blood brother and my, that's my, that's my ace. I love him to death. But my uh, freshman year up here, he got murdered the day before his, his birthday. He didn't even get to see me play yet. It was tough. It was, that one burned a lot because that's, if, if I never had a dad, that was my, you know, that was my dad in a way. Like I told him, just keep striving, it'll be okay. And then 2017 came. Two killed teenagers, just 15 and 16 years old. Residents report hearing about 30 gunshots just after 9 o'clock this morning. One man in a mask opened fire with what some believe was an AK-47. My little brother, Corey Hill, ended up getting murdered. Uh, uh, morning before on his way to school too. So it's like my family to be through a lot. I can't do <laughs> My little brother, he was always like looking up to me as like a superhero. Whenever I was around talking to him, he'd just try to do everything I do. When he got older, you can tell he experienced something that made him wanna want to be a little more rugged. I felt like without having me at home telling people the right thing to do, we were going to keep taking losses at a point. So I'm like, man, I got to get back home before I lose another brother. This is why I work for it. This is why I work hard. This is why I do everything. And if I don't have anybody, what was the purpose of doing all of it? He was ready to come back. I said, we can't come back. You got to do what you got to do. You can't, you can't just stop playing football for stuff like that. 
my mom was telling me that they gonna keep fighting. My teammates telling me keep fighting. I ain't got no choice but to fight, you know, and, and come back to East Lansing and work. I said my bad. You got a problem, you got a problem with me? No. I'm sorry, man. Just, just give me a little love. That's all I need. Oh, you been hard on me all day. Growing up, it was us all boys, so it was always tough, rugged. So when my mom started having girls, Desire and Amaya, it was great. I love them two girls. I love them to death. One, two, three, four, five, six. What'd you say? Well, I'm here on that team or that team. He's, that a, team? he's on a black team. He's number 41. Yeah, he's a tall one right there. Oh, there he go. Hey, brother. Desire, she stick by my hip all day. She just wants to be around me because I wasn't there as much because of college and high school. So whenever I'm home, she just asks a million questions. <laughs> Let's see it, y'all. I love Jaquan. He's on top of everything to be 13. Ray, pop that man. He think he's a real football player like you. Ain't you Michigan State, boy. There you go. There you go. Corleek was like a twin of Corey. I could tell he misses his brother. Some of the stuff his brother did, he wants to do. I'm going to hear about them. That was a good, one. good play, good play. Gangs are very like big on his radar. He thinks that's a, that's a cool way of like going about life. So when I come home and he sees me like uh, going to practices with uh, little league teams and like showing them drills and everything, he didn't think that was cool to do until he seen me do it. You look like you were trying to make a play that serious. See, see the difference? Yeah, I like that. I can kind of sense that I am affecting him because now he's back playing sports and he's back wanting to listen and uh, do everything my mom says. That's a good tackle right there. Oh, man. <laughs> the straight line is always the best line. You can't want to be a gangbanger and then expect that life is going to be smooth and silk. It's not like that. It's not. Can't you see that we took a lot of losses in this life? I hope that's getting through his head. That's not the way to go. What a weight! What a weight room at? I'm still, I'm still way stronger than you think. You way stronger than you think. I seen them hand me up. I don't really, I don't know. You just gotta get in the weight room. No, let's do, let's get a picture actually while you got a little equipment on. Raekwon can be really hard on himself because he tries to carry kind of the world on his shoulders a little bit, and I always try to remind him you've got to, you have to start with you. You have to take care of yourself and then you do as much as you can for people. This little slogan on his Instagram, Be Great Ray, it's been his thing since high school. You just gotta be great. Yeah, Ray. Ray's a good man. He's gonna have a degree, something to fall back on, and Ray gonna, I don't know if he's gonna get married or nothing like that, but he gonna be okay. He gonna be okay. He'll be all right. Go green! Go green! Go green. Go green. Go green. Go green.